The Night Beat starts right now. Three shootings at one home all in just the last week. That is the reality for neighbors along Prescott Road, which is on the city's west side. Now, so far, police haven't arrested anyone, but neighbors tell the night team's John Pavarajas they're terrified. We've had three shootings in a week. This was a very peaceful neighborhood. We never had any problems. Concerned and afraid to show their faces. That's how those living along Prescott Drive say they felt for more than a week. If they keep coming back, they still haven't found whatever they're looking for, and it's it's a danger to us. Bullet holes stretch across this home, starting from the garage over to the windows and towards the front door. According to SAPD, they found at least 23 shell casings here from three different drive-by shootings. Luckily, nobody was hurt in the first two. The people who live here were no longer staying here during the third. Scary. Like, why so many? You know, like... What did anybody do to somebody to deserve that? San Antonio police say the victim received threats through text from an unknown number on April 6th. Police were then called for shootings on the 7th, 9th, and 14th. They it, said it, it, it didn't catch it. SAPD tells us they haven't been able to identify a suspect or suspect vehicle through homeowner security cameras, but neighbors tell me they're doing more to help investigators and protect themselves. We're all adding cameras and Things to our houses, which is an extra expense to us. But, I mean, if it's going to help the police figure out who did it, you know, I'm willing to do it. For now, neighbors worry the shootings will continue. The houses are close together, and you don't know if it's going to ricochet and hit somebody else's house and go through a window. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. SAPD says Northeast ISD police are helping in the investigation. We asked the district about its involvement. A spokeswoman says that she's looking into it, but we're still waiting to hear back at this point tonight. Now, question, were you north of downtown San Antonio tonight? Because right now, police are looking for the man who shot another man multiple times in the chest. It happened near Austin and Chestnut Streets around two and a half hours ago. Witnesses say that a man chased another man, then shot him. Investigators say that both the shooter and the victim are in their mid-30s. At this point, it's unclear how they know each other. The victim is in critical condition at the hospital. Now question, do you recognize this person here? Because this is the man that Bear County Sheriff's deputies think stole several items from a Medina County patrol car that was left on lock. And among those stolen items, a badge, bulletproof vest, and an AR-15. The car burglary happened in far west Bear County on Field Sparrow. Surveillance cameras caught the suspect trying to use the deputy's credit card at a quick trip in the Five Palms area. So again, look at that picture. If you know who that is, call the Bear County Sheriff's Office. That number is 210-335-6000. Bear County deputies arrested two suspects and are looking for one more after shots were fired near the county magistrate's office this morning. Deputies say the shootout was linked to an ongoing dispute between the suspects. One woman got caught right in the middle. Her car had several bullet holes. Now, she wasn't hurt, thankfully. Investigators say that the person they're looking for sped off from the scene in a white Mercedes. Now, 30 years, that's how long a man is going to spend behind bars for beating a man to death. That's 33-year-old Jeremy Behe. He accepted a plea deal for the death of Michael Adan in 2022. According to arrest paperwork, Behe beat Adan until he was unconscious at a Northside apartment complex, and he later died at the hospital. He was a happy and healthy little boy. That's how Benjamin Severa's step-grandmother described this little boy to a jury today. Severa died in August of 2021 from what the medical examiner has ruled as starvation. The little boy's stepmother, Miranda Caceres, is on trial in his death. And today, the defendant's mother took the stand and described the relationship between her daughter and step-grandson. Did you ever see your daughter treat Brandon or Benjamin in a bad way. Did you ever see your daughter withhold food from Benji or Brandon Jr.? No. Meanwhile, prosecutors today brought up text messages that Alice Gossett sent her daughter that they say contradict what she was telling the jury. Closing arguments in that case are set for tomorrow morning. If she's convicted, Miranda Caceres faces life in prison. Major change coming for the Bear County District Attorney's Office. 
first assistant DA Christian Henriksen is leaving next week. That announcement coming from the DA's office and it quotes Henriksen as calling it a career change that he simply could not pass up. Now his decision comes after case that investigates revealed the relationship between Henriksen, DA Joe Gonzalez and the social justice reform group, which you know as the Ren Collective. Our case that investigates team first reported on the DA's office and the Ren Collective back in late January. That's when case that investigates uncovered hundreds of emails and text messages between Henriksen, Gonzalez, and the Austin-based group. The DA's office has defended that relationship. You can find a full timeline of our investigation into the DA's office and the Ren Collective over at KSAT.com. Well, it was a drizzly day in San Antonio, but we're going to see a little bit more sun in the afternoon tomorrow. As we take a look at temperatures, high temperatures over the next few days, pretty warm, near 90 degrees even on Thursday. But a cold front arrives over the weekend. Not only is that going to drop temperatures, but it's also going to be bringing the potential for rain. So here's what we'll talk about in the forecast. More morning drizzle tomorrow morning. Spotty storms possible during the middle of the week for Fiesta Fiesta. And I have increased those weekend rain chances those details and a look at our next weather authority medal giveaway coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Sarah, thank you. And now here's a look at your night beat news flash. We want to show you this right here. The man that DPS troopers say intentionally drove a semi truck into a DPS building in Brenham last Friday has now been charged. 42 year old Leonard Parker is facing charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Troopers are saying that Parker stole the 18 wheeler that he used to crash into a Washington County, Texas Department of Public Safety driver's license building. A 78 year old man was killed. 13 others were hurt. Two of the victims still in the hospital. Officials are saying that Parker was denied his commercial driver's license the day right before that crash. And tonight he's still in jail. Republicans still trying to impeach Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Earlier today, House Republicans sent two articles of impeachment to the Senate that automatically launches a trial in the Senate. House Republicans voted to impeach Mayorkas back in February because they claimed that he refuses to enforce existing border laws. But keep in mind that Democrats are the ones who control the Senate and they're expected to either dismiss the charges or conduct a quick trial that ends without a conviction. Mayorkas is the first cabinet secretary to be impeached in nearly 150 years. Ooh, be careful where you go to get Botox. The Centers for Disease Control and Food and Drug Administration are investigating after 19 people got sick from Botox injections. Apparently, they were bootleg. The CDC says that whatever people were injecting was counterfeit. Now, none of the people who got it got it in Texas. You know, people get Botox injections for migraines or spasms, but we know that most people actually get them to get rid of wrinkles. Now, if you do get Botox and you experience blurry or double vision, difficulty swallowing or slurred speech, get medical help immediately. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. Now, in San Antonio, USAA is laying off more people. The San Antonio-based company is letting 220 people go, citing, quote, changing business needs. However, the company will continue to hire people for other positions. Right now, it's unclear how the layoffs affected our local USAA offices. Almost 1,000 jobs. Uh, USAA eliminated almost 1,000 jobs uh, and back in May cut 300. For the first time in its 100 year history, USAA posted losses on its annual balance sheet last year. On a lighter note, Fiesta, it is almost here, my friends, and the party with a purpose officially kicks off with Fiesta Fiesta. That is this Thursday. It's happening at the Alamo Dome at the HEB Plaza. There's going to be live entertainment, games, the carnival. Also, who could forget the food? It's free to go. Plus, KSAT is going to be broadcasting live from Fiesta Fiesta, so come out and say hello. Now, we also want to remind you to celebrate safely. Here are the plans for all of the events. SAPD is doing walkthroughs, exercising, and exercises and other trainings to prepare people for the area. Meanwhile, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says that he's going to have deputies in uniform and also in plain clothes. It's also important to remember that there are going to be large crowds of people with Fiesta. So if you plan to bring your kids to the festivities, Sheriff Salazar actually has really good advice here. He says you should take a picture of your kids before the event, so you know exactly what they're wearing 
just in case they get lost. Rather than tell me my child was wearing just a red t-shirt, if I can see that it's a red t-shirt with Spider-Man on the front of it by the picture, that's much better. That picture can then be disseminated to, to all the first responders working that event. So another big one to think about, the kind of bag that you're bringing to the events because each venue has different rules. Don't worry about it. We broke them all down for you. Just look for the story right now over on KSAT.com. And of course, KSAT is your Fiesta station. We're hosting two special watch parties. Scan the QR codes right there to get tickets now for our Battle of the Flowers party or the Fiesta Flambeau, or hey, maybe you want to go to both. And if you want to be a KSAT insider, that's easy. It's free to sign up, but not necessary in order to buy tickets. Insiders get early access along with so many more announcements and special events, so it's a really cool thing to be a part of. Happening tomorrow, Metro Health is hosting Fiesta de Salud. It's an annual event that's all about providing health resources for our community. There's going to be a pop-up vaccine clinic, free STI and HIV testing, along with food, games, and prizes. It's happening from 3 to 7 p.m. tomorrow at Crockett Park. Now, we want you to stick around because we are going to introduce you to that special woman who is celebrating an unbelievable milestone. Plus, gone but never forgotten. It's a very special day for fans of Tejano music. We're going to tell you how they celebrated the life of Selena Quintanilla. It's next on The Night Beat. Raise your hand if you need a job. SeaWorld San Antonio is looking for help. It's actually holding a job fair to fill tons of positions. The park is looking for full-time and part-time employees. The job fair is scheduled for 3 to 7 p.m. on Thursday and Friday. And that's not it because they're also having another job fair from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. At the sat on Saturday at the SeaWorld Human Resources Center. So if you're interested, here's a tip. Apply ahead of time before you go. And we have a link to help you with that on KSET.com. Also, good luck. You know, she's not with us anymore, but her legacy is still very much alive, especially right here in South Texas. We are talking about the Hanna music sensation Selena on what would have been her 53rd birthday. As you know, Selena was shot and killed in 1995 in Corpus Christi by her former fan club manager, but her fans, they are never going to forget her. This right here is video from the Beady Beady party at the park at the Pearl Brewery earlier today. People gathered from all over. Look at that little girl. How cute. They were having fun and keeping Selena's legacy alive. Now we caught up with one fan who talked about what the Tejano superstar means to him. She means a lot to me because as a fellow Latino and somebody who grew up who didn't have a lot of exposure, her music brought a lot of spotlight to the Hispanic culture and Latin music in general. Yes, she did. Now, this party at the park wasn't the only celebration for Selena tonight. There was also a concert at Stable Hall along with a Selena Mariachi tribute over at the St. Anthony Hotel. Now, we here at KSAT are taking this moment to wish someone very special a happy birthday. Sin codo. Ay. Sin codo. <laughs> that is domino-loving Irma Santiago Torres. She just turned 101. Irma lives in Lavernia. She loves gardening, as you can see. She loves telling jokes. She's also active in her church community, and she likes pigtails. In fact, the Vatican sent her that letter congratulating her. And I'm told by her daughter that she's very sassy. She's never smoked, never drank alcohol, and she said that she's lived this long a life by having a positive outlook on things. She just doesn't let things stress her out, and she doesn't believe in saying negative things about people. I like that. Happy birthday to you, Senora Irma. Happy birthday. We're so happy to share your story. All right, so now we're going to take a, oh, oh, I was just going to say we're going to take a live look yeah, outside, but you know, we've dealt with a lot today, we especially with, with that drizzle. drizzle accidents. That's right. We had some crashes this morning because of the areas of drizzle. Here's a look at the time lapse, and you can see that we've had some of those areas of drizzle throughout the day today. It wasn't until the later afternoon that we even saw some peaks of sunshine in the sky. Now, that was here in San Antonio, but out west near Del Rio, it was actually sunnier and 
hotter. Take a look at those highs out west. 98 degrees for the high in Del Rio. It was 90 in Rock Springs, 84 in Catula, 78 in New Braunfels, and 80 here in San Antonio. As we take a look at the national weather pattern, I want to mention this big upper level low uh, that brought some tornadoes, unfortunately, to parts of the Midwest. We're on the tail end of this system. Stalled front over Texas right now. This is the reason why we had so many clouds, but they had plenty of sunshine out west is because we were on the humid side of that stalled front. Meanwhile, another upper level low in Baja California is going to move eastward towards San Antonio. This is going to keep a small potential for storms in the forecast Thursday and Friday, only about a 30% chance. So not a guarantee on Thursday and Friday to see rain. However, I do expect on Saturday for us to see some rainfall. It does come on the weekend, but you know, we need the rain because there's still drought conditions, but we're going to get a cold front that moves through and Saturday could potentially be pretty rainy right now. As it stands, we've got about a 60% chance for scattered showers and storms both Saturday and Saturday night as that front moves through. So think about this. If you have any weekend plans outdoors, of course, there's a lot of fiesta festivities happening. I know rain has never really stopped San Antonio from enjoying the party, but it is something I want you to consider for Saturday that we do anticipate rainfall and we'll continue to keep you posted. How much rain could we see? Well, the most amount of rain will fall up near the Dallas Fort Worth area, but around San Antonio, anywhere from half an inch to an inch of rainfall, mainly on Saturday. Now, as for the day tomorrow, we are going to have more drizzle in your KSAT 12 hour forecast early tomorrow morning. Areas of drizzle for the morning commute. So Keep that in mind. Give yourself an extra 15 minutes to get to where you need to go. It'll be patchy in nature. And then in the afternoon, we will see peaks of sunshine with a high temperature, a little bit warmer than today. We'll get up to 85 degrees for the high in San Antonio. We'll see 82 in Comfort, 81 in Kerrville, Lost Maples, 83, 83 in Hondo. It'll be 87 at Stinson, 86 in Nixon, Smiley, 87 in New Braunfels, 85 in Pleasanton, and 86 in Poteet. Putting it all together for you, a morning drizzle tomorrow 85 30 percent chance for only isolated rain Thursday and Friday. If you have fiesta plans or outdoor plans those days, just keep the case out weather authority app handy because again, rain is not going to be too widespread. It will, however, be more widespread on Saturday and Saturday night. Take a look at how much temperatures tumble behind that front on Sunday. We'll struggle to get out of the 60s. It'll be a nice day with low humidity and Monday. The weather looks so nice, low humidity and temperatures in the 70s. Hey, tomorrow, KSAT meteorologist Mia Montgomery and I will be at 1300 Main Avenue West Cypress with Metro Health. We're going to be handing out our Fiesta Weather Authority medals. The line starts at 4 p.m. giveaway after 6 p.m. Come out and say hi. We'd love to be able to give you a Fiesta medal. For now, though, taking a look outside with live cam, it is a humid night outside. All that drizzle really just putting an exclamation point on the humidity today. Stephanie. You feel it as soon as you open the you door. Do. Yikes. But it doesn't matter for a local baseball player because he got the opportunity of a lifetime. Of Big a day. lifetime, a huge day, a long awaited Major League debut for Alamo Heights own Forrest Whitley. He finally got the call and he made his debut when Houston took on the Braves. Plus, the Texas Lutheran softball team continues its winning ways. Nick Mantis has more on the Bulldogs after the break. I was half asleep and just kind of woke up briefly for a minute and uh, I was getting a call from our AAA manager, Mickey Story, and I was like, well, it's going to really mean one thing, pick up the call. And it's the first time in my life I really kind of felt that uh, surreal moment where I was kind of having a hard time discerning <laughs> real life from uh, what was actually going on. Alamo Heights zone Forrest Whitley drafted in 2016. Once the top prospect in the Astros organization called up to the big show in big board sports. The Houston Astros are off to a 6 and 12 start to their 2024 campaign and enter today ranked 29th in the league in ERA currently without a number of key guys in their bullpen. Their latest call up of San Antonio's Forrest Whitley will be their 22nd pitcher used this season. And after eight years in the minors, Whitley's major league debut arrived in a difficult situation. One out in the bottom of the ninth with the Astros trailing by four with two runners on 
and in scoring position, Whitley let up a double but got the remaining two outs to retire the side. But those won't be applied to his ERA. They were charged to Sean Dubin. And the final from Minute Maid Park, Astros fall 6-2. The Texas Rangers suffered a 4-2 loss to Detroit this afternoon. The Rangers are now 500. And the Missions dropped their series opener at Corpus Christi 3-2. They are now 6-4, and, and Game 2 is tomorrow at 635. All right, the Texas Lutheran softball team has put together another successful season, standing at 23 and 2 on a 15 game winning streak. Our Nick Mantis went out to practice today to learn more about the Bulldog squad. We are failing. <laughs> yeah. by, yes, A program that's only lost four conference games since its 2019 Division Three National Championship knows how to stay consistent. But what's led to this year's success? We have a lot more players this year, so a lot more depth. Um, we have a lot of good pitching in the circle this year for us, and we have a lot of different defenders. If I'm not doing well, I know that five other pitchers have my back, and they can go in at any minute and do their job just as well as I could do it. We have a lot of expectations of one another and team expectations, and so being able to reach those expectations is one really big part in why we're so successful. I think it's an exciting brand of softball. Uh, we, we enjoy it, and it's fast and we keep you on your toes and it's all gas, no breaks. While this team is locked in on staying successful this season, they're also enjoying their time here at practice by keeping the atmosphere fun. They're bumping music, they're talking a little trash. It's almost like they want it to feel like one big party. We say that we do bulldog parties. Every day is a party when you're with these girls. It's so fun. Everyone, we're all super, super close, and it's just fun being out here. I just think it's so electric, and it just gives us that certain vibe, as in, like, we're in it together. We're having this party together, and we're all in it. Everybody's here as a whole, and so we're fighting for each other. We're loving each other, and uh, we're just kind of doing it all as one big party. So it's really what it is. In Seguin, Nick Mantis, KSAT 12 Sports. The NBA postseason is here, starting with the play-in tournament. Lakers at Pelicans, Torian Prince, San Marcos product, making his third career play-in appearance. He hits the wing triple, and the Lakers lead. Zion Williamson, an unstoppable force, gets to the cup to beat the halftime buzzer. Zion dropped 40 points before leaving late with a non-contact injury. L.A. had 14 threes, five of which came from D'Angelo Russell. That's a key trade down the stretch there from D'Lo and the Lakers. Hang on, they'll face Denver in the first round. Pelicans face off against the winner of this matchup. And at halftime, the Kings lead the Warriors 54 to 50. The East play in begins tomorrow. All right, well, lots of smiles on the faces of student athletes in Uvalde. We'll tell you why right after the break. Welcome back. We are looking at Uvalde's new state of the art weight room unveiled this week by the Uvalde CSISD athletic department. This is an upgrade that will impact generations of student athletes in the Uvalde community. It's all a part of the iron sharpens iron initiative created by the Texas high school coaches association and funded by Finn Ewing. Ewing's $200,000 donation turned weight room came in due time. This donation means so much to our school and our community. The weight room we had, it was great, but I will say it's nothing compared to this. And it means so much, especially for the powerlifting girls, but also all the females, female athletes we have at the school. It's really going to help us as a team, because um, we all know like we, we didn't really have a good weight room back then, but yeah. From this donation, it's, it's really going to help us get better. It means everything, you know, a donation like this to get this weight room redone and, and, and not just the good equipment now, but to have kids that will be able to come through here for years with the brand new equipment. It's worth it. It will be immeasurable. Watch out for the Love coyotes. That. Yeah. Anything that those kids in that community get, I'm all for. I'm just so happy Agreed. for them. And this is, I mean, what kid wouldn't want a gym like that to get ready? It's, yeah, it's going to be a big deal for sure. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll be right back after this.